Hello everybody, welcome back to my Frisco and Cherokee Narrow Gauge Railway. Today we're going to begin the evaluation and assessment of our newest acquisition, this Acme Brick Kiln Car. The car is in rough shape, but I do believe it dates to the late 30s, early 40s. So for its age, it's actually halfway decent. The wheels on the car are all free rolling. There's one little chip on uh, one of the wheels that I can fill though with uh, some JB Weld. Besides that, they're in pretty good condition considering the age. All bearings are free rolling, which is good. I know a lot of these old kiln cars, the bearings are seized on them. Body work is rough, but I believe most of it is salvageable. As you can see in the center here, they did kind of weld a plate in and they've done some other modifications to the car. I've noticed they've actually uh, welded some extra bracing in the center. Another thing about this car, the Acme Brook Tramway does not use couplings, they just push everything from behind with either a little dinky locomotive in the old days or modern day with the forklifts. So the car will have to be fitted with some Lincoln pin couplings to work on my railway. Another big problem with this car, on this end the car has been hit one too many times and the uh, frame is actually cracked out there. You can probably see a little bit of sunlight dead center. It's just three inch angle though, I can cut that out and replace it. Also a lot of these straps are worn pretty thin on the top, which is kind of to be expected as this thing did carry bricks for about 70-80 years. This car would be expected to hold two pallets. As you can see on the ends of the cars, there's uh, extra sets of holes drilled. Originally these were double deck cars and they could hold four pallets, but uh, as the cars began wearing out, they had the tendency to split in the middle because of all the weight, so they made them back into single level cars. My plan is to add bulkheads using the original holes drilled, mount up and make it about uh, three, four foot tall so that way it can push from each end of the car without having to bend down way low. I also plan to paint the cars. We're going to go with uh, black paint and white lettering and one side is going to be painted Acme Brick Company. The other side is going to be painted for the original owner, the Fort Smith Brick and Tile Company and Acme predecessor. Besides using the tramway on the brick side, they also had a short extension which ran out to the location of Central Mall right across from it where they used to own a rock quarry. This abandoned rail line can still sort of be traced running through the city of Fort Smith. Before moving to gas mechanicals, they also had some steam locomotives over there, just little bitty two foot gauge porters. Sadly, none of these exist, but a few of the three foot gauge counterparts that worked at the Perla, Arkansas plant do exist. One of them is actually up in a museum in Bull Shoals, Arkansas. Like I mentioned in my last video, this tramway is still very active. Uh, they have seen about 150 cars stacked out there. They seem to use about 50, 60 at a time running through the kilns, and they're currently working on cycling and rebuilding their fleet. Alright, and in our next part we are actually going to start dismantling the car and actually taking a further assessment of the metals. Uh, I hope to have this car totally apart, and I want to check it end to end, and my goal is to salvage as much original material as possible. I believe a lot of these things can be rebent out. Fortunately, some of the cross straps are rotted beyond repair, but I can easily replace them. Thank you all for watching, I hope you all enjoyed it.